Hello YouTube friends. I'm going to make a little series uh, now that I'm going to post in October sometime. Uh, it's not quite October yet, uh, but you'll see why when I show you what it is I'm going to be making. Uh, apart from Norma who's here, look, we've got Cat Rita just sitting next to her and over in the window We've got Prudence, who's just taken in some rays there. And Sadie's outside somewhere, so she'll be back in soon. OK, so what am I making? Some of you may know, if you follow, follow this channel, that my daughter is a, going to have a baby in October. And she and I and Adam have been talking about the kinds of things that I might make for the baby. Uh, I'm knitting some stuff and I'm sewing some other things. Some of them she's asked me to make and some of them are surprises. So I'm going to do a few little uh, a little series where I show you the things that I'm making for the baby. And because I'm going to be a bit busy at that time, I'm hoping that I'll post these videos while I'm busy looking after um, Martha and Adam and a new baby, maybe. OK, then, so um, Martha found this beautiful fabric. Here it is. Uh, she found it online, in fact, but then subsequently I found it in uh, the local shop in Newcastle, John Lewis. It's called Double Gauze, and it, she, she bought it in all the colours that she really likes. So what we're going to make with this, with a pattern that she chose, is these little cute little baby trousers. And so you can make them just as a single layer, which uh, is fine, I guess, but there's also a tutorial from the same people, Wixton, Wixton. I'm not being sponsored by anybody. I'll leave all the links to the patterns and so on in the description box below. On Pinterest, which is where she found this, there is a tutorial for how to make them lined. And it's terribly easy. And lining them, I think, makes them uh, just uh, warmer. This baby's going to be born in October. Uh, they may, it makes them uh, smoother on the inside so that this stuff is very, very, very soft. So if you wanted to have them reversible, which also lining does, you could have, you could have this bit against the baby. And uh, I've chosen to use this fabric. Now, a while ago, Martha came here and dyed some fabric um, here in my kitchen lots and lots of different colors that she likes she's going to make uh, a quilt uh, for the baby using these um, all of these uh, lovely different colors but there's plenty of it there'll be enough she won't notice that i've stolen a piece to line these trousers with or to have as the outside and have this as the lining because it's softer and they look great together don't they so in the pattern that I bought, there's a big sheet with all the different sizes on, but I don't want to cut that out because then you, you lose the individual sizes. And I want to carry on making these little trousers as the baby grows. So I trace them all onto uh, tracing paper. I've got a big roll of this stuff. And that is a terribly simple pattern. I traced it in two different sizes. I actually traced it in a third size as well, which is for when the baby's quite a bit older. And I've got naught to three months and three to six months. So I'm going to make three to six months for this pattern. I'm sure there's enough fabric here to do that. That's it. That's it. One pattern piece. Simply one pattern piece. And this is, uh, did we buy a metre or half a metre of this stuff? We bought uh, a half metre. And that's cool because that fits on there perfectly. So obviously we need two of those. Okay. All right then, so I'm going to cut the pattern pieces out then. I'm going to cut the pattern pieces out of the double gauze and also out of this fabric that Martha dyed, which is like a cotton.
So I'm using the tutorial on Pinterest about how to line these pants and I'm choosing this, this soft gauze, uh, double gauze to line the insides and the lining tutorial says to mark the lining one and a half inches smaller than the pants. So that means that that line goes there. and a little tiny bit shorter at the leg as well. Three quarters of an inch shorter at the leg. So we'll measure that as well. Uh, all in inches, of course. So I'll measure that three quarters of an inch. I'm not going to cut that. I'm just going to mark it on my pattern piece so that I'll know in future. OK, so I'll just I've got my pieces all lined up here ironed and lined up and so on. So I can cut both of them at the same time. So I'll put that piece there. Okay, and now I'm going to cut this one out. The next instruction is quite simple. I take the outer and the inner and I just sew them together right sides together. Now there is no right side and wrong side with these so I'm just going to sew them together with a quarter inch seam down the side seams and around the this bit here. Okay so I'm going to do that now. There we are then. That's the outer and the inner stitched together. And then I'm going to just clip round the curved edge here so that it will lie nice and flat. Uh, actually, I've got a better pair of scissors than those to do that with. Uh, here we go. They're just smaller. I'm, I'm just going to clip them round the edge, nowhere near the stitch line, just halfway along like that, just so that that curved edge will lie flat. The other edges are all straight, don't need to worry about doing those. So now I've folded down and pressed the bottom and the top of the trousers. The next instruction then needs me to put the lining in here and it talks about me having the wrong sides together, which if I feed the lining. I've turned the lining right way round. So I'm going to feed the lining now onto the trousers, keeping my um, nicely pressed edges in place. So I'll press them really well so they'll be fine. So now we have wrong sides together, which is what we want. Make a bit of space. And I'm going to line up the side seams, this is the side seam of the inner piece, with the side seam of the outer piece, like that. I'm just going to tuck it up there, like that. I'm going to pin that all the way around now. Do you know what? I can't find my pincushion. Somewhere about. So now everything is pinned beautifully. And it just remains for me to sew round carefully so that I make the sleeve, the little casement to put the elastic in and sew round the bottom. The bottom is going to be tricky. I'm not sure whether I'm going to manage to machine that or I'll hand sew that. Uh, I'll decide. I'll do the top first. And it'll be easier to do the top if I take this off my machine. And I'll start here. A daisy, sorry. There now. I'll start here and I'll leave a little gap where the el elastic's going to be introduced. I'm just going to carefully sew all around the bottom of this now. Can you see what I'm doing? go. 
So I've got back round to where I started. So I'm going to leave an inch here so that we can get the elastic in. But now I'm going to do a top stitch around the top of the trousers because I think that will just neaten it off and look nice. There we go. I'll tidy up all those thread ends at the end. Now I think this is, yeah, this is too small to go over this part of my machine, which would have been perfect if it would would have gone over there. I would have been able to sew it really easily. But I am going to machine stitch it, I think, rather than, shall I hem it? I'm going to hem it by hand. I'm going to hand stitch around the bottom. I feel much better to do that. And I've got this thread that doesn't exactly match, but it's not far off. So I'm just going to do a little hemming stitch around the bottom. Now, this is, these are the inside of the pants, but in fact, they're reversible. She can have them either way round, however she decides when she's dressing this little baby. It's exciting. Martha's very, very well. Um, she and Adam are really well prepared for this little one. And uh, yeah, it's very, very exciting expecting my first grandchild. So while I'm recording this, it's going to be, I'm going to put it out, as I say, in October sometime. But it's the middle of September at the moment. And it's very, very beautiful weather, sort of Indian summer weather. Really, really lovely weather. Uh, I did a big thing with the bees yesterday. Um, I have um, the four colonies of bees. One of them, if you're following with the bees, one of them's in the top bar hive. So that's that one. And then the other three are in ordinary boxes and in order to I mean I know as I'm as I'm recording this it's only September but you really have to start thinking ahead to the winter now so what I've done is I've combined the two of the colonies into one which is quite a tricky process I did it yesterday and you also there's a a, a horrible mite that's endemic uh, all over the world now called varroa and you have to treat your bees for varroa. I don't really like uh, treating uh, bees. I don't really. I'm not a big fan of medicines in general. However, the varroa mite could wipe out the entire colony over the winter. So I've chosen to go for the least invasive option, which is something called Apigard, and it's a little uh, tray with a sort of uh, jelly-like substance on it. And you put that onto each of the hives and then again in three weeks time. And that helps to control the varroa mite. So I did that yesterday. Now the top bar hive, I'm no idea what I'm doing with that. <laughs> but I gave them some food and I gave them the treatment and I shut them back up again. And they can just have all their honey for themselves this winter. The other three hives, like I say, I combined two of them. And put the treatments on. Now I was doing so quite a lot of invasive procedures and I had it all dressed and all kitted up and everything. However one bee did manage to sting my finger. I wonder if you can see how red and swollen that is. Stung through my glove about there and so all of this part of my, my finger now is um, very stiff and um, it doesn't hurt. It's just an uh, unpleasant feeling. But, you know, that was one bee and I was really doing a lot of very invasive things. So I was hoping I'm going to go down a bit later on and see if they, if they're all OK. Um, I don't know what I'll do if they're not. <laughs> anyway, so bees soon they'll be all snuggled down for the winter and hopefully they'll have enough stores to keep them going. I hardly took any honey off them this year. And I will be giving them some sugar 
in the shape of fondant, which is the same fondant that you use for cake icing. It's exactly the same thing. And I'll be putting some of that on for them at Christmas. Uh, a little Christmas and New Year present for them there. And so that's, uh, yeah, that will be hopefully, fingers crossed. And then the way that it works is that if that colony that I've united gets through the winter, uh, with fingers crossed, then what will happen is I'll be able to split them again next next spring and make two colonies. It's just better to have more bees in one place to get everybody through the winter. Anyway, in chatting about bees, I've come all the way around to the other side of this leg now. And the next thing we've got to do is tie that off really tightly so it doesn't come undone. But you know, you don't you, that if it does come undone, I can fix it really easily. <laughs> you know, if this goes through the washing machine a few times and needs to be um, mended, I'm right on hand to mend it, aren't I? OK, then, so that's the um, that's the bottom of the legs done. What we need to do now is put the elastic in the top so that this is all elasticated together. Now, I've got my little stack of elastic in this box here. So let's find the right size. There's all sorts of elastics in here. Uh, different colours, different widths. And um, I'm guessing that's going to be the right one. So, just angle you guys down and show you what I'm doing. So this is the, the, the casement bit here that I want to put the elastic through. So I'm going to put a big pin on the end here. I'll just get enough elastic off this off here it played out and find the place where I've left the gap which is here okay so the elastic is pinned to this big pin now and then I'm going to scoot the elastic through you know how to do this I'm just going to look at that poorly finger <laughs> I'm just going to run the elastic through here what I'm trying to do is just not twist it really I'm going to get the whole thing all the way through I just push the pin along and push the fabric back, scoot the elastic through. And I'm not going to sew off the elastic. When I get to the end, I'll show you what I'm going to do there. So we come to the end now. And there's the pin just peeping through. I can tell all the time I've been doing that that the elastic has stayed nice and flat so I haven't twisted it anywhere. I'll just double check. There we go. Now instead of sewing that off, I don't really know what size um, we're going to need that to be. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to cut it and then we're going to pin it together and then when we know how big this needs to be for this particular baby then we can sew that together and then sew it inside the casement. So that's just, if you're making these for a present for anybody that's a good idea to do because then However big the however big the child is, you know you can adjust that uh, accordingly. I've left it really very <laughs> loose indeed. So I intended this to be the inside. So let's turn that round now. See what that looks like on the other side. So those are the little straight little legs there, uh, straight bottoms there. But what we can also do is turn those bottoms, the bottoms of those legs up like that, and this one as well, 
depending on how long we want them to be. And we can have a little turned up leg like that. And there we have some little baby pants, three to six months old. And because I really like this pattern, and Martha does too, she bought the pattern, I made another pair in the other colours that she likes in the first size. So this one is the same pattern, but I did it a tiny bit smaller. And with this one, I made the inside pink. So in fact, you could have them pink because they're totally re reversible or you can have the outside grey. These are all colours Martha chose. She likes these colours a lot. And so little grey trousers for this baby in the first size and then little green trousers in the next size. They don't look too much smaller, do they? In fact, they look exactly the same size. But I did make the next size up. In fact, they are exactly the same size. OK, well, she's got two pairs of trousers then. Now, I've got quite a few bits and pieces of the double gauze left. Some little offcuts of this. But I've got another project that I'm going to make with those. And I'll show you that next time. Soon we'll have a baby to put these on. That'll be fun, won't it? I'll leave all the links to the pattern. Here it is. It's called... Wixton baby and toddler harem pants um, it was uh, not a download they sent the pattern to me it's good it's got all the pattern instructions you need here and it's got the big um, chart of all the sizes that I made uh, my small patterns from and then on Pinterest you can find the tutorial for the lining so I'll leave all those uh, all those links in the description below and uh, they're, they're good, aren't they? I might make another couple now that I've got the uh, recipe out and the iron on. OK, guys, I'll see you next time and I'll show you what I'm going to do with a bit more of this. Thanks for watching.